coming up on KCBS Playtime. All right. So uh, obviously the radio, it, it, it's it's a radio. Um, so where did I get this radio? What's 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 it doing here? Um, it is a uh, ICOM IC746. Uh, this was graciously donated to the channel. Uh, so thank you, Robert. Um, he's here in Silicon Valley, so I went to his place of work and he handed it over to me. Um, he's actually doing some RF stuff too that uh, uh, is very interesting. But he had this um, radio. I guess he hadn't used it for some number of years. And he bought a really nice flex radio and he uses that now. He has no use for this one. And uh, he just kind of dug it out of mothballs and turned it on. He went, uh-oh, the power's low on it. So um, he thought that maybe it would make a good uh, repair video. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll do that. So it looks like a real nice radio. It is uh, HF. It's uh, 30 kilohertz to 60 megahertz HF. And then also it has a VHF section, um, which is really, really cool. So uh, let me go over here. I've stored some things. This is the... Uh, the actual tower frequency of uh, the local airport. And this is the, uh, the ATIS. Let's see, I don't have an antenna hooked up. Let me, let me quickly do that. So there we go. Um, so this is the uh, ground frequency on the San Jose airport. Uh, this is the uh, tower frequency. And this is the ATIS, which is the weather and, and notifications and stuff. Um, so yeah, so it can receive um, VHF. I don't remember the span. It's something like a one something like 108 to 160 or so, I don't remember, something like that. But anyway, it does do uh, two meters. So uh, it has a, a button here for getting onto 440 and it has all modes and supposedly 100 watts. So yeah, pretty nice capable VHF uh, radio, which I don't own. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, I don't really know if I have any need for, for this particular thing, but um, yeah, I think the, the first thing to do, um, Last night I turned it on and uh, received all kinds of stuff. So I know the receiver is working really, really good. Um, I just kind of stored them in, in different frequencies here uh, so I could hear uh, AM uh, broadcasts of 5, 10, 15, 20 of, of WWVs. I could hear the FT8 frequencies. Um, we could probably hear one of these right now. Whoa. Sorry, oh, that was loud, wasn't it? Oh, let me, I could turn off the room lights, otherwise I get too much noise in here. Here we go. I think you heard that. Even 10 majors is having a lot of uh, FD8 on it. The nice thing about this radio, it has a, has a noise, uh, noise reduction you can turn on that's quite effective, it works really good. Anyway, I like the radio, I like the radio a lot. It's got uh, uh, filters and stuff. It's, it's kind of the precursor of the 7300. Uh, if, you're, if you own a 7300, this is kind of familiar. Um, or the other way around. All right. So yeah. So we know it's uh, we know it's receiving just great. And uh, I was uh, looking at a bunch of. Uh, let's see here. Other frequencies as well. Like I said, I've, I listened to some airplane stuff, and then I, I listened to a bunch of shortwave stuff last night. So it was receiving all of these, uh, all of these uh, frequencies just fine on shortwave. So uh, yeah, uh, pretty cool. And even uh, even this one I think was a tow truck company <laughs> at 42.08 uh, FM. Anyway, like I said, seems to work just fine on receive. It has low output power. Um, so yeah, let's try to figure out if it's the, uh, uh, something wrong in the final amplifier. Uh, we'll take a look at that. All right, let's test the, uh, the power output. Um, the previous owner had said that when he hooked it up, 
it had low power output, so we need to verify that. Um, so I've set it to, um, I've set the, the quote dummy load kind of thing to antenna number two. And so I can go over there and we can transmit into, into the, uh, into the dummy load. Now it's not going to be a dummy load. It's going to be a, uh, uh, an attenuator. So I have a 20 dB attenuator, um, on the output, right? So, um, a hundred Watts is 40 dB and, um, 20 dB will take it down to 20 dB, right? So we had plus 40 minus 20. Now we're going to have plus 20 plus 20 is one watt. Okay. So we're going to have one watt output out of the, uh, out of the attenuator. And this attenuator is good to 250 Watts. I, I did a video once on, uh, on building this thing. It's homebrew. Um, so we're going to see if we get one watt on the output. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can look at its own, what it thinks the uh, output power is. So if I, I put it, I put it in a CW mode and put it onto street straight key mode so I can, I can transmit. So uh, the transmit light comes on and it's transmitting and it says we've got 20 Watts. Now I have the RF power turned way down. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn the RF power up and it bottoms out right around uh, about 30 watts. I can't get any more than 30 watts out of it. Um, now, let me put it right about 20 watts again. And I want to verify that it really is only outputting 20 watts. It may be that the metering is broken, the SWR bridge is broken or whatever, right? And maybe some diodes and stuff that are blown. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't measure the uh, measure the actual output power. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to see if I get one watt on the output of my attenuator. Okay, so let's go take a look at that. All right, so I have uh, my uh, radio test set here, and I will key down the uh, transmitter, and we're getting 18.4 uh, watts. Now, the, the reason I know it's 18.4 watts is this is reading watts. It's 0.18. Um, so 0.18 is 18% of one watt. And uh, because I have that 20 dB attenuator in there, that's uh, that's 18 watts. So we're getting 18 watts out. Let me turn the RF power uh, output power adjustment. See if we get around 30 watts out. Yeah, we're getting 22 watts. So 23, 24. 24, 25 watts. So it's not outputting any more than that. So yeah, there's something definitely wrong with this thing. Um, now that's on the HF side of things. Now this, this particular radio has both HF and two meters. So let's repeat this test on two meters because it is a separate power amplifier. Um, it has the same drive section, but different power amplifier. So if the drive section is, is dead, then both HF and VHF will be low in power. If only HF is low in power and, and VHF still gives us high power, then we know that we have some problems in the final amplifier. So yeah, let's do that. All right, so let me move the, uh, let me move over the dummy load to the VHF port. Funny, funny thing was on this radio, when I first got it, I thought the VHF section was completely deaf. I didn't think it could listen to anything. This thing has three connectors on the back. It's got, Two for HF and one for VHF. So I didn't. I never had a radio that had three, three connectors on the back, and I wasn't connecting it up correctly. Okay, so I'm going to move this over to the VHF. I mean the uh, yeah the HF. All right, so now I have my my uh, attenuator on the VHF side. Uh, let's go ahead and set the frequency to say uh, 144. Uh, megahertz. So 144 megahertz. CW. Uh, we should be able to transmit power. And transmit light came on, but I don't see any output power. Uh, let me turn this way down. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I don't seem to be getting any output power at all. I mean, maybe there's one watt. I mean, maybe. So let's go, uh, let's go take a look at the analyzer. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, two watts. Only two watts. Wow. And let me turn the gain up all the way. That's half, about 50% gain. And I'll go up here and we're getting yeah, two watts. So yeah, I'd say the driver is dead. Um, I've read a little bit about this radio and yeah, the driver seems to die on these radios. So that's conceivably it. Um, anyway, that's a first look at the, uh, at the transmit problem. All right, um, I'm not gonna be um, working on this right away. I've got too many other projects I need to get done first, but I thought I'd show this. I'd, I'd show the, uh, the failure, failure mechanism of it. And if anybody has any comments, if they've owned these and they, they've seen this thing before, um, I think some people online have said it might be the, there's a driver chip and there might be a, uh, something wrong with the ALC um, uh, level control. Uh, I'm not sure what it is on this one yet, but anyway, I don't have enough desk, uh, bench space right now to be working on two projects at the same time. So I'm going to put this one on hold and, uh, and we'll come back to it.